Are you tired of all of the complexity that comes with using a Bitcoin hardware wallet? Do you wish that there was just a cheaper, simpler option than figuring out how to configure one of these $100 computers? Good news, the Tap Signer exists. The Tap Signer is a signing device or basically a hardware wallet manufactured by CoinKite, the same company that brought you the cold card Mark IV. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up your own Bitcoin wallet using this Tap Signer hardware device and the iOS or Android phone that you already have. So go down below and smash the like button for Bitcoin security and let's level up your brains. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do here is go to the App Store and we're just gonna go ahead and download the Nunchuck Bitcoin wallet. And basically what Nunchuck is, it's a multi-sig coordinator similar to Casa or Unchained Capital. But what's really cool is that the Tap Signer actually integrates with the Nunchuck wallet. Because that integration between Nunchuck and Tap Signer exists, we're going to be able to take advantage of the NFC capabilities of our iPhones or Android devices. And then also the security benefits of something like the Tap Signer where your seed is generated totally offline. Similar to something like a cold card mark. For. So next, let's go ahead and just open up the Nunchuck Bitcoin wallet and we'll click on get started. If you've seen any of my Unchained Capital tutorials here on the channel that I'll leave up in the cards and down in the description, this user interface for Nunchuck is kind of like a sleeker, cleaner version of the Unchained Capital interface, in my opinion. Basically, you've got two different things going on here. You've got keys and you've got wallets. Keys, you can kind of think of as signing devices like the Tap Signer or like a Cold Card Mark IV or like a Ledger Nano S Plus. And wallets are going to be generated from the private keys of those signing devices or wallets will be made up of multiple signing devices so you could have a multi-sig of your cold card mark 4 your tap signer and your ledger nano s plus or your cold card mark 4 your tap signer and your software wallet provided to you by nunchuck and so with wallets, you can kind of mix and match and get as fancy as you want to get. But signing devices or keys are just these individual devices. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and add our tap signer here as a key. And it's going to be an NFC key. So we'll click on add NFC key, and then we'll click on add tap signer. It's basically telling us what a tap signer is here. And then on the next screen, it's saying that we should put our tap signer next to our iPhone. So let's go ahead and click on continue and then hold your device next to the NFC key. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my tap signer on top of my iPhone here. And now it has read that I have a tap signer. So it says this tap signer has not been initialized. Do I want to initialize it? I'll click on yes. And now it's asking me if I want to provide any of my own additional entropy to the wallet that's going to be generated from the tap signer. And I think the recommendation from Nunchuck and from Cold Card is that you go ahead and just click on automatic here. But if you do want to roll your own seed, you can click on advanced and I'll pick my own chain code. And then you're going to have to enter in a random 32 byte hex string, which you could generate by rolling a 100 dice. If you are going to go this route, make sure that you do roll 100 or more dice to generate this 32 bit hex string, because if you don't, you'll be losing out on some of the entropy and some of the security benefits of using a hardware wallet in the first place. And if you do something like roll six dice and provide that amount of entropy, your wallet could actually be totally compromised and the funds from the wallet could be stolen because you've created a wallet with not very much entropy. And if all of what I just said doesn't make any sense to you, just go ahead back here and click on automatic and then go ahead and check out the video that I'll have linked up in the cards and down in the description where I did a deep dive into this exact topic. So let's go ahead and continue here with automatic. So now it's asking for us to put in the existing pin and then create a new pin code. The starting pin code is going to be on the back of your tap signer and then you'll create your new pin code. And I suggest you back that pin code up in something like one password or whatever your password manager of choice is. Your pin code has to be between six and 32 digits. So once you've set that, you can go ahead down here and click on continue. And now on the next screen, they're going to scan our tap signer again and give us an encrypted backup file for the key once this process is done. So I'll click on got it. And then I'll hold the tap signer here onto my iPhone once again. And it's going to give us little status updates down there in the corner until we're 100% complete. So now I've got my backup file here and I'm just gonna click on save to files. And so to recover this tap signer now, we're going to need that file that we just saved and the backup password that's listed on the back of the card. So we'll go ahead and click here on continue and then we'll name this key tap signer. So now we can close out of here and we will generate a wallet from our tap signer key. So let's go ahead and click on create new wallet and we'll call this wallet tap signer wallet. So we can click here on customize address type and it is cool. You can see down here we have access to Taproot. I'm gonna leave this at native SegWit for now. And then down here on customize wallet type, I'm just gonna leave it at standard wallet and I'll click on continue. And so now it's asking us what key do we want to associate with this wallet? And we'll go ahead and click on the tap signer. 
and then continue. And then we'll finish this up here with create wallet. And then down here, we'll go ahead and save this BSMS file. We'll click on save to files and we'll just save this on our iClouds. And basically that BSMS file is very similar to what we've done in previous tutorials on this channel. When we've implemented things like Unchained Capital's multi-sig. And the reason you need that file is if Nunchuck ever went out of business, you would be able to use that BSMS file in some open source software like Sparrow or Electrum to recreate the multi-sig that you have maybe created here in Nunchuck. So next we'll go down here and click on done and now let's try to receive some bitcoin to this tap signer wallet so we'll click on tap signer and we'll click on copy address next we'll swipe up out of here and look for strike we'll click on our bitcoin tab here and we'll go ahead and click on send and then we'll click on qr code and we will paste our qr code here and let's go ahead and just send all of the sats here out of strike and we'll set the priority to the highest priority so that we get our transaction as soon as possible so we'll click on next and then we'll click on confirm so we should have just sent about 11 dollars of bitcoin there to our tap signer so now if we click on okay and head out of strike and back over to nunchuck we'll just go ahead and wait on the screen until the wallet has picked up our transaction and literally while i was talking it went and picked up the transaction right there so now we can click on this transaction and see that we're receiving those satoshis that we sent over from strike we can click on more details here we can add a transaction note so sent from strike and then of course we can click down here on view on blockchain explorer and we can see exactly when our transaction is going to arrive here on mempool.space so the transaction was seen just now its eta is in 10 minutes it was sent for a fee of 13 sats per byte and it should be totally confirmed in our wallet here on nunchuck pretty soon something else that's really great about the nunchuck wallet is we can click up here on manage coin so now what we're seeing here is the utxo sent over from strike and we can do things like lock this coin which would mean that in future transactions transactions if we wanted to not spend this particular UTXO from our nunchuck wallet we have the ability to not spend this UTXO from our nunchuck wallet we could tag this UTXO as sent from strike and so then we could create a bunch of different tags we could maybe create tags for Bitcoin that we've received from mining or Bitcoin that we've received from you know rendering goods and services or Bitcoins that we've received from withdrawals from KYC platforms and create sort of a framework here for ourselves within our nunchuck wallets to separate KYC Bitcoin from non KYC Bitcoin some pretty interesting features if you're interested in the more privacy minded side of Bitcoin and if you're interested in keeping track of your UTXOs which is something that I highly recommend that everyone start to do I have a link to a video that I did a couple weeks ago that explains why if you're not keeping track of your UTXOs you could actually end up with a bunch of Bitcoin 20 years from now that you're literally not able to ever spend which would be really unfortunate and I think that everyone needs to sort of get ahead of that now while the fee structure on Bitcoin is still relatively low so with that being said, let's go ahead and click on save. We'll unlock this coin and we can go back to the wallet and we'll just wait here until this transaction has been totally confirmed. And then we'll go ahead and send it out of this wallet using our tap signer. All right, guys, so we've got three confirmations here on the transaction that we sent to the tap signer wallet. Next, let's go ahead and send these coins out of the tap signer wallet and over to my blue wallet that's also on my iPhone. So we'll head over to blue wallet and we'll click on the mobile wallet and we'll click on receive. Next, we'll copy this address and head back over to Nunchuck and we'll click on send. We'll choose to send all of the Bitcoin. We'll click on continue. We'll paste in the address here and we'll make the note tap signer demo. We'll click on customize transaction just to see what options we have here. We're going to choose to subtract the fee amount from the send amount. And then we can choose here to select a manual fee rate. We're going to go ahead and choose to select seven sats per byte. It looks like seven sats per byte is kind of across the board right now for the mempool. You can see priority standard and economy there. And then here is where you can do your coin selection that we talked about earlier. Right now we just have the one UTXO in this wallet. But again, if you wanna learn more about how to manage your UTXOs and why you really should be managing your UTXOs, check out that video that I talked about earlier. Next, we'll go ahead and click on continue and we will confirm and create the transaction. And so this is the point in the demo where we have created a Bitcoin transaction, but it has not been signed for yet. And in the case that we have right now, we have a one of one wallet, which means that we only need to sign with a single key, which is the tap signer that we created this wallet with. But in a multi-sig case, this is where you would have the opportunity to sign with two of your three keys or three of your five keys 
keys or whatever your multi-sig setup is. So let's go ahead and click on sign here and we will sign with the tap signer. We'll go ahead and enter the pin to our tap signer. So remember to write that down in some place that you're not gonna forget it. I like to use one password for information like this. So I've gone ahead and entered my pin here and I'm gonna click on confirm. Next, it's asking us to put our key near the device. So we're just gonna slap it on there and we have now signed the transaction. We can see over there, it says signed, there's a little check mark. And now we'll go ahead and click on broadcast transaction. It says the transaction has been broadcast. So now if we slide back over to our blue wallet and we just start to refresh here, we should eventually see that the transaction gets picked up by the mempool that the blue wallet is looking at. All right, so we can see here now that we have this pending transaction for $9.95. And this is the exact same Bitcoin that we originally sent from Strike over to the tap signer wallet and now over to my blue wallet. And it looks like I actually didn't set the fees to be too good there because the ETA is in about three hours, but eventually it will get confirmed. And this should show you a very basic use case for how to use the tap signer and why you might want to use the tap signer over something like a Ledger Nano S Plus or a Cold Card Mark IV. But obviously the drawbacks with the tap signer is that there's no physical display that's allowing you to verify and confirm transactions directly on the device. And so you are trusting that Nunchuck is showing you the correct information when you go to sign the Bitcoin transactions that you're sending out of the device when you sign with the tap signer. Additionally, there are no pins or physical security on the tap signer. And so if you are worried about some of these more niche security features of the cold card, I would still go with a cold card. Overall, I think the tap signer is a super interesting device, but it's not going to be something that totally replaces your Ledger Nano X or your cold card Mark IV. At the end of the day, all of these devices just make different security trade-offs. And that's what I find super interesting about the tap signer. Not everyone needs CIA grade security for their Bitcoin. And I think a lot of people are just going to find the tap signer to be a lot more accessible than some of these other hardware wallets, especially when they start to get into multi-sig solutions like the one that we covered today in the Nunchuck wallet. That being said, we didn't go through a full step-by-step -step tutorial of how to use Nunchuck for multi-sig. And so if you are interested in a full tutorial like that, definitely let me know in the comments down below or check out some of the other content that I've done here on the channel using software like Unchained Capital and Casa. That's it for today, guys. I love you all. See you next week. Wah!